Hello, one and all, and welcome to the podcast we call The Fantastival with myself, Stephen Nussbaum, in the podcast where I invite my guests to come on and talk to me all about their musical tastes, their memories, their experiences, and I get to play their fancy festival, which I have christened Fantastival. We are now on episode 109. I hope everyone had a most excellent Halloween. I hope if you went trick or treating, you enjoyed yourself and got lots of chocolate and lots of sweets. And I hope if you went to see some fireworks, you enjoyed them immensely. And before we start 109, I must say a massive thank you to Simon Peck, who was my guest in episode 108, an HMV legend of the highest order. His musical knowledge was absolutely out of this world, an absolute legend of a man. I hope everyone enjoyed that. And if you've not listened to that one, please go back and do so. So that was 108. This is 109. And I'm delighted to introduce this gentleman. His bio states, acoustic folk, punk, artist, band, which I think is a perfect roundup of his musical sound. He's just a great all-round human being. And I've only known him for 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Fraser Morgan. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) What an intro. Mate, I always try and bring my guests in as well as what I can. Fraser, how are you, mate? It's good to uh, have you on the Fantastical Podcast. I'm absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited. I mean, I've been telling you just before we request record, I just wanted to, just wanted to go. Like, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me on. The, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing really well. Thank you. How have you been? I'm all good. I've been excited about what the day brings. I've been listening to your stuff and I'm really looking forward to talking all about that. But Fraser, before we talk about all your musical tastes and your experiences and your fantasy festival, I always like to check in with my guests, make sure from a mental health perspective, they've been all right. It's been an odd, well, almost three years now. So the first thing I do is always check in and say, how are you doing? How are things been? So Fraser, mate, how are you? How am I? That is a very great question. Um, I think in the aspect of, if we look at in the context of like today in the past couple of weeks, it's been very interesting. I mean, if we look at the past two or three years, obviously, obviously the panoramic was a very interesting time for everyone. And that's where I did a lot of my growing. In the panoramic, I'd moved to Ireland for a partner. We'd broken up. I'd moved back. Um, I love going to therapy, so I've always gone to therapy. And I just I did a lot of growth, which has been absolutely fantastic. And I'm so happy. Past couple of weeks, I've, I generally, my base happiness is quite high. And I think that's because of the fact that I've gone to so much therapy now where I'm, I'm quite self-sufficient and quite emotionally aware. And, you know, and part of what I do is I like to to talk about mental health and stuff but no this past couple of weeks and months have been very interesting up and down but not in like a chaotic way but in a I guess in a human way Um, because obviously I do music so I get very excited and very high about music and then sometimes I feel quite down that I'm not doing my music full time and so that's been that's been like a really interesting feeling uh, to navigate because I get so excited about my music or if I'm my my goal is to every day do something that contributes to my career in some way. Every single day, I try and do something that contributes to my career in some way, whether that's finding gigs to apply for, festivals to apply for, uh, managers to email, uh, book and agents to email, venues, people to interact with on, on social media. Every day it is, there is something. And I've realised <clears throat> within the past 24 hours, actually, uh, that's where I find my sense of meaning. My sense of meaning is within music and my progression of music. I've got other avenues that give me meaning, such as cooking um, and looking after and trying to help other people. But a big one for me is that progression of music. So, so it's been yeah, it's been it's been quite up and down. But generally, my mental health is very much uh, in, in an amazing place. I've been having some interesting thoughts. Um, I've always. I didn't realise how long for, but I've always struck. Now, I, this doesn't mean to go into a dark place. It's an absolutely awful way to start off a podcast. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But I, I've been having interesting thoughts and feelings surrounding death, essentially, more so recently, and it's been doing my head in. But then today I was going through my notes app on my phone and arranging all my notes from over the past four or five years. Apparently I've been feeling this way for ages. So I was kind of like, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, but that's something I can bring up to, to, to my therapist. But generally, about my life story... I'm quite good, to be completely honest with you. That's good. That's good. Yes. A great answer. And Fraser, I know I introduced you from a musical perspective, but what else is behind Fraser Morgan? What else do you like to do? What do you do? Who is the man behind the beautiful person who I can see in front of me on my Zoom screen? Uh, You're you're more beautiful, Steve. (laughs) I tell you what is beautiful, your collection that you've got behind you, that was uh, the first thing I noticed as soon as I come into this call. I was like, Steve, what is that? And you were like, this is working HMV. Basically, yeah. <laughs> it is an unreal collection. Man behind 
me is uh yeah i i I, obviously it's music obviously but within all that there's uh, i feel like there's many i think we all have many aspects to us and our personalities and things that'll be all those that's why we have so many different friends and friendship groups because for our multiple personalities that we have not in like a not in like a clinical way but in a way that we have lots of different tastes and interests so behind my uh, outside of the music well, I work for a students' union, so I support university students within their education, and that's kind of my day-to-day that keeps me busy. And then I also uh, do podcast, like yourself, as, as we discussed. I'd like to do podcasting. Um, I own uh, a, a little record label with my friend called Sad Buds Records, where we put on monthly music nights to raise money for charity, and then we put on a massive event at the end of the year called Merry Sadmus. Uh, <laughs> last year we raised a group brand for charity which is awesome and then we also put on other music nights as well and i've started to do what's called sad bud sessions where i basically film my friends in really beautiful reverberative locations around the city and then i also do i'm very involved in mental health extremely involved um just through my own journey after i just i looked i looked at my most recent breakdown about a year ago when i felt like just, i was just like i need to sort myself out and i looked back at it and i saw how low i went and i was like own men's mental health group that I run, which kind of, I guess, uh, links with the podcast that I do, which is all about mental health as well. So I guess more or less uh, it's mental health, uh, podcasting and music and, and, that, and that side of things, really. And I love cooking, though. I love cooking. What do you love, to, what do you love to cook? What's your, what's your uh, go-to? I just I, cooked a risotto that went down very well in the, uh, <clears throat> in the household. Oh, yeah, risotto is good. I, so I've got a couple of new favourites. At the moment, I love cooking a shepherd's pie. I'm loving it. I've cooked it multiple times now, and because I, I, I went to the office the other day, and I was like, "Is that shepherd's pie?" They're like, "Yeah." So I was like, "I'm going to make one now." And my first shepherd's pie, and I was like, "This is the one. <laughs> it's amazing." Or I make like Taco Bell burritos at home, which are amazing. But tonight I made some fajitas, and it's awesome though because I I discovered my my mum can't cook. I love her, but she can't cook. She knows that. She admits that. She's like, I can't cook. I'm like, no, you can't. And so I kind of learned to cook through. My ex-partner at the time, I think we were living together and that, and then I started to, I went from oven food to like jar food, and then slowly, and then throughout the panoramic, I really got into it, and it's like a, it's a great way of that purpose, and that sense of meaning, and you get like, there's one of my favourite things is to put a podcast on, just get lost in cooking, and ah, it's one of my favourite spaces, if, if I have a really bad day, coming home, like, I'll intentionally make a big meal, so I know I can be in the kitchen for an hour and a half, two hours, <laughs> listen to a podcast, cooking. And it's just me. I, I'm one person. I cook for myself. I eat by myself. But I'll cook like three or four days worth of food for myself just so I can have that opportunity to come in for a shit day and f- uh, uh, and fall into that tranquil state of listening to a podcast. It's, it's just, yeah, it's a nice feeling. And then knowing for the next two or three days, I don't have to cook because I've got my food. So it's pretty good. So now I've got more time to come home and chill out. So it's great. Yeah. <laughs> so it's clear, Fraser, already how important music is to you and in your life. How did you mm. get into playing music? Was it something that you started very early or was it something that's progressed to where it is now? How did you get into it? <clears throat> I didn't. Oh, Steve, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't mean to get into music, right? So if we, how do we look at it? If we go to the most recent kind of turning point of music up until the age of 16 i wanted to be a banker wow, okay? okay yeah I, I, I was like dead set i was like i can't i don't know what 16 year olds who this person was but i was 16 years old i was like i'm going to be a banker and my mum was like fair play you're good with numbers um go for it i was a very intelligent child growing up and then i played my first gig and i was like mum i'm gonna be a musician and she was like <laughs> good okay okay great and she didn't tell me till years later until i started to make it in music she didn't turn around to me and then she was like you know me you told me you wanted to uh, to quit being a banker and go into music she's like i'd be lying if i said it and shit myself a bit like because yeah, yeah, yeah. i've got this sturdy career as i said i was an intelligent child into numbers and i'll start playing music but the first ever time my musical experience again i don't know why i did this i was nine years old and my mum got a letter through. She was like, Fraser, why have you entered the local school show? And I was like, oh, I'm going to sing, mum. She was like, what? <laughs> so with, behind her back, without her knowing, I basically went and auditioned to be in a school year six show. I can't tell you why I did it. Still to this day, I didn't sing. I couldn't. I still can't dance. I don't know who I thought I was, right? 
but I did it. Uh, and I loved it. And I was like, this is cool. And then for at school, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to be a banker. Um, you know, smart child, doing your school show here and there. And then I played my first gig when I was at 16. And I was like, oh, this, this is it. This is this is the one. So I dropped out of my sixth form. Well, I didn't even officially drop out. I just stopped going to sixth form. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just... I just stopped going to sixth form altogether. Bear in mind, at the time, I was studying philosophy, business, ICT, performance studies, Latin, and I was competing nationally in trampolining. Wow. And I was like, I'm going to go be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> so then I dropped out and reapplied for another unit, uh, another college, and then I studied music. And then that's where it really started to to, to take, to, to go, really. And even then, I was, I don't, listening back to myself, I don't think I started to be listenable <laughs> until I was about 21, 22, so about three or four years ago, because I'm 25 at the moment. So about 2019, 20, is when I started to be listenable. So I spent about at least four or five years really old. They, they say honing your craft, but it was just me trying to be less shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I listen back. I listen back. The amount of gigs I got booked for, and I look back at my old videos, I'm like, I don't understand why anyone booked me for anything. I think you're a bit harsh on yourself because the old we were talking about this about this before. So your stuff's on Spotify and Apple where you'd expect to find it, and the older EPs are still available. Yeah. You've left them up to kind of show everyone your musical evolution. Yeah, right? well, I, I took them down, and then I was like, hold on. Well, I said to you earlier, I wanted to give people that comparison because I don't think I'm like amazing, but like I know that if I listen to. 2017 Fraser's EPs on Spotify and I listen to 2022 Fraser and I look at his live performances I'm like that's a whole different person yeah. and if I was to ever make um, a full-time job out of performing music I'd want people to see how far I've come like if I ever for some weird reason it's like today I've got like five thousand followers right which isn't that many but for some weird reason if one day I went from five to fifty thousand I don't want people People would be like, he's a one-hit wonder, or he just come out of nowhere. It's like, no, 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 no. Go onto my Spotify, scroll right down to the bottom, and there are three EPs that sound like shit. <laughs> 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 I promise you, I did not come out of nowhere. I have been trying to sound good for years. <laughs> Well, you, I mean, you new. St I mean, I I like the older EPs as well. The new stuff, like we said, I feel you can see and hear your musical evolution grow. But let's, I guess, talk about like the two newish ones. So you got Inebriation that came out in twenty twenty, and Home is where yes. the heart is twenty twenty two. They're just one track singles. Both are singles. great. I guess tell us about about Home is where the heart is. So Home, well, actually, I guess actually to tell you about Home is Where the Heart is, I actually have to talk about inebriation. So February, come February 2020, I'm like, my mental health's in a great place. I want to start a band. You know, let's actually start releasing music again. Because when I was in London, I fell into a bit of a rabbit hole of music and I kind of lost myself for a bit. And I kind of sort myself out and it's great. So February 2020, with my partner at the time, I'm like, let's go, let's, re let's start releasing music. I released my single. Three weeks later, Boris Johnson's like, stay indoors for the next six months. I'm like... <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> great time to release a tune. There is my comeback, everyone. I'll see you outside again in a year and a half. Yeah. So so that was great. <laughs> and then I move out. Uh, I, at this time, I'm still at university, right? So come April, April, like two, three months later, and I'm sat in my garden and my university's like, right, we're all working, we're all at home. I want you to write a song with the word home in it. Now, I'm a massive Noah and the Whale fan, massive Unfortunately, I left my old, I had a really cool framed poster and it's at my ex's in Ireland, so, which I'm gutted about. I basically wrote this song for the competition and I was like, so I sat down and wrote it and it's Home is Where the Heart Is and I sent it off to my uni and I never got a response. So I think I lost, but <laughs> I, really, I really like the song. So the song itself, so inebriation is about how myself and my ex we always used to kind of get drunk together it was actually really fun we had a great time so that's what inebriation is about and if I open it my favorite thing to do with you is slowly fade my way into inebriation with you um and that lyric comes from i was at a train station in braintree once about 10 o'clock at night and this really really drunk man stumbled up to me out of nowhere which went i'm rather inebriated and i was like well, that's a great way of saying that you're shit faced <laughs> i've never heard that before i love it so i made a song out of it and the home is where the heart is came about because um my ex had to move back to Ireland. I had to move back to Colchester because we both live in London. And I was at home. And I was like, well, at the time, I, you know, I really liked this person. And I was like, oh, home is where the heart is. And I've never been so far from it before because of the huge distance between us. And it just started to kind of roll from there. And then I moved over to Ireland at an awesome time. 
seven, eight months later, we break up. And then I moved back. And this is where I really, gen- like June 2021 is really where you start to see me musically kind of change because I haven't gigged in so long by this point. So around June 2021, I'd played about 500 gigs. By this point, 550 gigs. And I'd missed it so much that when I played live again, I threw every atom of myself into every performance because I hadn't been able to play a gig in so long and I still had so much energy and so many emotions from this old relationship. So I was just hammering away his gigs and um, I really found myself when I, and it sounds really twatty to say, but I, <laughs> musically I found like how I liked to, to be and perform. And the home is where the heart is. What you hear now that last part of the song never existed before. It would just end, oh, I miss you, darling, 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 oh, I miss you, darling. And that was it. And that was the end of the song. But then one day when I was performing, I just threw in there, and I miss 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 and I miss. And I just kept going with that. And I started to get louder and kind of more passionate, shouting it. And I was like, that was fun. And then loads of people come up to me afterwards. And they kind of validated my feelings mm. towards how, I, how it felt for me. And I was like, that was insane. So my local scene in Colchester, they saw me illegally going into pubs and playing gigs because that was a fun story. I was playing in this pub in town for ages, the ball. And then one night I went in there to celebrate my 18th birthday. And they were like, what? And they were like, but I thought, and I was like, oh yeah, I've been like 17, 16 this whole time. <laughs> and they were like, shit. Right. So my local scene has seen me go from this 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 year olds who really can't sing to then all of a sudden I've come back. And I've started to stamp the stage with my foot. I'm starting to sing these lyrics with passion. And I'm starting just to throw every ounce of myself into this music. And that's how Home Is Where The Heart Is kind of evolved, which is really interesting because I forgot about that evolution until I got a memory up saying, two years ago today, you recorded this video. And I looked at it and I was like, that's almost like a complete different song now. So that's how Home Is Where The Heart Is came about anyway. That's a a great story of your evolution. Probably a good time to talk about like live dates then. So... You know, we had a year and a half with no gigs, no one could do anything. It's back on track now. There's so many artists and acts doing so many gigs in such a short space of time. So, Fraser, what's going on with you live then? Because I know you've done a lot of stuff with H&V Colchester and Fox yes. Covent Garden and you've been out and about. And, and seen... H- H&V Ipswich as well. Can't miss them off. H&V uh, Ipswich, yep. Simon, I know the manager, Simon, listens to this podcast. So I love Simon. Simon, if you're listening, you and your team are absolute heroes. <laughs> Honestly, they... Are such and they're all so passionate about music um they're trying to help me get my cds stocked and i needed a number from hmrc and i was like yeah sorry i'm trying to get it and then my hmv documents expired and then i got my my hmrc number through so i said to simon i was like right we start it again they said it to me again and i've lost my hmrc uh. number <laughs> so but yeah but no they are incredible humans incredible yeah, they're really like pushing new music, which is fantastic. So, what 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 live dates have you got? Because I've seen already, you've got quite a few dates already for like up to like mid next year as well. Yeah, um, what live dates have I got? Because I've got quite a few, and I've got a lot that I can't. I'm not allowed to announce. Well, ah, well, no, actually, I could do what I want. But I've got like, where are we now? Yeah, so I'm supporting Collars, which are a really cool Norfolk based band at Hunters Club in uh, Barry St Edmunds and. Um, on Saturday the 5th <laughs> then on I think that's Saturday the 19th I'm doing the Christmas light turn on for Braintree Amazing. I've done that for about five or six years in a row now they keep asking me to do it and I'm like I never say no <laughs> and then Friday the 19th I'm playing at Lion Walk in Colchester with the full band oh sorry pardon me um, November the 30th um, Les will like this um, I I don't this isn't 100% confirmed but it's looking like I'm going to support in my friend's rats in, in London, and I can't wait because I love Joe. I was on the phone to him yesterday. He's one of the nicest, honestly, Joe from Rats, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life. I love him. Then December the 10th, on Saturday, December the 10th, I'm playing for, uh, we won that Mary Samus gig, so I'm playing that on Saturday the 10th at Coda, about 9 pm. And then February the 4th, 2023, I'm playing at HMV at Switch on the Saturday. Amazing. What's this one I've got in here? I've got two gigs for March and May, and I think they're both for. The mayor of Colchester wants me to play some gigs for him. Wow. So I said I'd do that. And then I've got one for July the 8th. I'm playing a, f- a little festival in Silver End for the Scouts and stuff. And then August the 19th, I've got a private function for an alpaca farm in Brightling Sea. And I'm very excited for that. 
and then I'm also I've applied for like fifty to hundred festivals as well that I'm th- I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I'm going to get on to a lot of them um, across kind of Europe, which would be really nice. Sounds really cool. So lots going on back into this year and next year as well. It's quite quiet. That's that's really quiet for me. Like I, I think I've removed my old gig list now. But if you look at my gig lists from April to mid August, it was. Every weekend, I had at least two or three gigs wow. for every month. Um, I was playing, so I've averaged out this year. I've done about 160 gigs this year, maybe nearly 170. And I average out to do one gig every two days, one and a half days. And so this is really quiet for me, but it's still really fun. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so how do people find you on social, Fraser? If anyone's listening, guy, and he sounds like a bit of a character, I want to give his music a listen, or I want to give him a follow on Twitter or Insta or even TikTok... <laughs> How do people go and yeah. find you? By typing in Fraser Morgan UK, but it's not like Fraser the TV show. It's you take out the I. So it's F R A S E R and then M O R G A N. And the UK, like United Kingdom, because there's already someone out there called Fraser Morgan. Oh, you know what's quite man. funny? I accidentally made his life hell because everyone was tagging him in all of my shit. <laughs> and he got so annoyed he's now had to turn his account to private oh no way really <laughs> yeah well it's like give me the name then and change it to something else <laughs> let me have it then but no he's um on private. he's put on private now yeah because he, he, he went he messaged me at one point i'm pretty sure and it made me laugh <laughs> that's funny that is quite funny so phrase i mean what what type of music are you into it sounds like again it's so important it sounds like you've done so many gigs you must have seen a lot of acts but what are you into person what 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 what, what, what does it for you oh crikey well obviously everyone says the usual answer oh a bit of everything these days but it's very eclectic um generally like on a day-to-day basis um i don't listen to the same music in terms of s- about five or six days a week i will never listen to the same song because every monday i listen to all of my discover weekly so i make sure i go from start to finish on my discover weekly i've been doing this since the start of the year because last year it was like, you've listened to X amount of thousands of unique artists. And I went, that's rookie numbers. I can beat that. Hmm. So my goal for this year was, was to listen to as many brand new artists as I literally physically could. So uh, I listen to my Discover Weekly every single week. I go through and I press like on the songs that I like. I then radio those songs to find more songs and artists hmm. like the one that I liked. And then from that radio... I like some songs and it just goes on and on and on. Um, so one of my favourite things to do is yeah, not listen to the same music twice. However, when it does come to listening to outgoing out of way to pick someone or like my favourite type of music to listen to, it would have to be folk punk and hip hop, hands down, because I like folk punk because lyrics, cause I, I, I like lyrics. You know, I, 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 I've always liked lyrics. Like, I've never been musical all my life, but I've always been quite... Um, and it's not the word I want to use, and it's quite contradictory to what I'm about to say, but I've always been quite wordful. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've always been a, a massive fan of words. Like, I'm a massive fan of etymology at the moment, you know, finding those origins of words. But I remember writing poems from the age of, like, six or seven and just never stopped. So lyrics are where it's at for me. So acoustic folk, that folk punk is... That folk punk, yeah, sorry, is... Um, it's where it's at for me because lyrically they're always very interesting they don't always follow a narrative um and they've always got something really interesting to say but then hip-hop was the first genre of music that i listened to by choice so growing up my mom would always listen to like um genesis um and dolly parton and, and things like that uh eight years old my mum was like what do you want for your birthday fraser and i was like you know what i love mum eight year old me would kill for a copy of eminem uh, curtain call please so Father Christmas bought me a copy of Eminem Curtain Call, as would any good parent. <laughs> and I fell in love with it. I, obviously, I didn't know what half the stuff meant, but I adored it. I adored the lyrical aspects. I was, one, the first song I ever learned all the words to was Eminem Mockingbird. And I'm like eight or nine years old, right? But I loved the lyrics. I loved the flow and the fact that they could say all these amazing things and make them rhyme and still tell a story. Like, I was blown away by that. And so hip hop still now, like I, I adore it. And, and yeah, so this folk punk hip hop is, uh, is, uh, are my favorites. They're my, they're my go-tos 100%. And what you listen to at the moment, is there anything you recommend at the moment? At the moment, 
to be fair, the most I've been rinsing lately is um, the 1975's new album. It really took me by surprise. Because I used to be a massive 1975 fan. Um, you know, they're quite poppy and all that. Mm. And they're quite young and, and immature. And I loved it. And then as I got older, like they released another album called I Like It When You Sleep for Your Beautiful. You're So Beautiful, Yes, So Unaware of It. And I was like, that's a good album. And then they released A Brief Inquiry into, into Something. And another album called Notes and Conditional Form. And I was like, these two albums are not as good. And I was like, I was gutted. And then they released um, a brief, um, Being Funny in a Foreign Language. And it's an incredibly cinematic piece of art. And, you know, I watched his interview on it. And it's, it's, like, um, it's like sitting down to watch. Um, so picture yourself sitting down to go and watch a Broadway show, right? And all of a sudden you hear this piano come in. And it's kind of like the entrance of the show. Nothing's happening. You can't see anything. But the lights are going down. You're sat in your seat with your friends. And all of a sudden, as the curtains start to slowly open, that's exactly how the album kind of starts, right? It's got this piano. And you could close your eyes and picture yourself as if you are, again, about to watch this Broadway show as the lights coming down, the curtains opening. And it's really... It's a really solid piece of work, art. And the songs all vary. It's a really mature album, given their journey. And it's just got it's got incredible diversity and um, honesty and sincerity to it that I absolutely adore. And musically, there's a gorgeous variety to it. You know, there wasn't a single song where I was like, ah, that's a mm. bit weak, that one. I was like, these are all class, to be fair. So that's currently like the most like go back to's that I've got, if that makes sense. The other day I listened to a bit of Sam Fender's uh, Seven Going Under. I've seen it's a, it's a great album. Um, I'm trying to look what else, cause I, um, I've got other little songs that I rent here, but yeah, they're my kind of, my current go to's. Mm. Okay. Good um, stuff. Good stuff. In terms but, of your yeah. first, I know you spoke about getting Eminem when you were eight years old for Christmas. Were there any albums before that? Do you remember your first album and what that was? My first ever album I, th I genuinely think it was the one that i picked it genuinely was eminem curtain call i remember listening to the genesis album with ripples on it my mum had that and she rinsed that and the dolly parton album that had now i'm colorblind but i think it was either blue or purple background with a picture of dolly parton stood up on it i remember my mum absolutely rinsing that as well but yeah eminem is like my first ever album and then as I got older, I just listened to UK Top 40. And then I found Eminem again. And I was like, oh, wow, he's great. I'm 15. I know what these words mean now. Hmm. So now I've, 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 I've listened to the entirety of Eminem, Eminem's discography, right from his unreleased stuff. And like he has a song called Infinite, which is like 1998 or something, right up until his current releases. And, and so, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. He's an amazing artist. He stood the test of time, which is quite clear for... Uh everyone to see so fraser this podcast is all about you collating your fantasy festival are you a big fan of festivals have you been to many oh my god oh uh, so up until this year i never had the consideration to go to festivals okay because i was i was i was playing but i wasn't good enough to play the festivals but i didn't have enough money to go to festivals so i was still trying to spend all my time doing my own gigs so that i could try and get to festivals one day but i i never thought about festivals right until this year, when I started, I've always played solo. When I got the band together, we went to loads of festivals because we played them all, and it was absolutely awesome. But yeah, I'm a massive festival fan, massive festival fan. And what about gigs, Fraser? Do you have a favourite, or do you have favourite gigs? In terms of which dynamic? In terms, well, it can be one that you've played, or it can be one where you've been an audience member and you've gone insane. I so in terms of playing. One of the best gigs I ever played was a headliners festival. It was a proper hippie festival. I love it. It's called Harlequin. And that's to a few thousand people. And that was just chaos. I mean, that was great. So when when myself and a band play, we <laughs> it's quite funny. Um I've I've been recently I've been we've been referred to as like the craziest, most one of the most craziest energetic bands they've ever seen. And I love that because we are quite chaotic, but in a safe way. Yeah. Like we are we're predictably unpredictable in the sense where you know, we won't stand out there and punch someone in the face, but we're, we're just a bit crazy. So on stage, I tend to, like, take my top off and I'm singing and going mental. My guitarist is somewhere in the crowd doing his thing. Um, my drummer, Jess, is absolutely smashed just playing his drums. Uh, and then my harmonist, Soph, is, like, jumping around the stage. On a Harlequin, I... Um, what happened? We have this thing where uh, we play the tequila song and drink tequila on stage. 
we there was this young girl who's been a fan of music for a while. She's about nine or ten. Her mum brings her to the festivals of Fort Legend, and uh, I, she was on my shoulders at one point. We were dancing on stage whilst we were singing the song and that. And then we ended up starting a stage invasion and had over 50, 60 people on the stage with us while we played our last song, Home Is Where The Heart Is. And uh, I found out the next day that we, they had to get four people in to fix the stage and someone <laughs> to fix the lights because we'd broken a lot of stuff. But we are chaotic and we are a bit punk rock. But I did turn around to him and say, look, I'm actually really sorry about that. If there's any damage, invoice us because at the end of the day, that was our doing. So, and we're not, we're not, we're a punk rock, but we're not, we're not dicks. Yeah. So, so that would be fun. But some of the best gigs I've ever played have been to five or 10 people solo and just doing my thing and being able to connect to people in that setting. But watching wise, um, I got to sneak into a Dermot Kennedy gig once, which was awesome. Dermot Kennedy is a phenomenal Irish artist um, who has, he has deep soul within his voice. His, his voice isn't so full, but you can, when you listen to him, you feel it. And you go, oh, wow, okay, this man's got me. So I managed to lie my way into a Dermot Kennedy gig once in London. It was sold out. I managed to lie my way in, and I was the first person in there. And I didn't wow. have to pay for my ticket. This is when I was a broke student. <laughs> uh, I managed to lie my way in, um, and I was front row middle for it. And it was probably one of the best gigs of my life. <laughs> <laughs> It was bloody fantastic. I literally, I got a, I got a notification on my phone. But like, Dermot Kennedy's playing in London today because I lived in London at the time. And I met this fella called Austin, this Aussie guy. I met him in a pub once and he just like turned around to me one day and started speaking to me. And I was like, you're well weird. I like you. And we become friends. And I rang up Austin. I was like, what are you doing tonight? He goes, oh, I don't know, mate. Like, just at home. And I was like, do you want to come to a gig? He's like, yeah, all right. Then who are you seeing? He was like, I was like, Dermot Kennedy goes, I don't know who that is, but yeah, I'll go. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I managed to, he had to pay for a ticket, but I managed to like my <laughs> So yeah, it's phenomenal. So that's one of the best gigs, I think. Oh, great stuff. That's, that's how you do it, getting free to a gig uh, as a broke student. Amazing stuff. I know, I don't I don't promote it, but if I found out that someone had did it at my show, I'd find it amazing. Yeah. Like it wouldn't bother me in the slightest because I think music should be completely accessible for everyone. And so if I find out that someone's like, as long as they're not like a weirdo and they're actually a bit of a joker, <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, you're sound. Do you want to come backstage? Like, I'd find that hilarious. <laughs> one day. I'm sure it happened to you one day, Fraser, where someone tells you they've got into one of your gigs for free. Uh, I and... hope, I can't wait. I'd high five them and buy them a pint. I'm about you absolute hero. And you'll remember that this time on the podcast, as they're telling you they got in for free, you'll be like, I spoke about this on the Fantastical podcast. <laughs> and you'll smirk to yourself and you'll laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like but I said, what some of the some of the other some of the other best acts I've seen, in complete honesty, have been local acts to Colchester. I'm not even joking. I'm not saying it because it's where I, I, I'm currently um, placed physically, but honestly, Steve, Colchester has probably the most insane music scene that I've ever come across in my life, and I'm genuinely not just saying it. The talent here is stupendous, uh, and it's a shame that TikTok ruined music because it has. It's made it's made it more accessible, but also very difficult because now all the A and R guys who go out and do the talent searching, they're on TikTok now. They're, they're looking for the people on TikTok. The next big thing on TikTok are the people that they can make money off in TikTok, so that they can invest into the slow burners that make them more money over a longer period of time. And so, and it's such a shame because the talent here is phenomenal. Like I, I write down a list of local acts that I adore, and there's just insane talent here, like the Mefs, Armored Man, Jack Walsh. Tundra, the collars, like it's just so much insane. There's some of the best gigs I've seen. Rad Pitt as well, like yeah, hundred percent. Great stuff, yeah. <laughs> There's so many great local acts out there who deserve to be mm. seen by much larger audiences, and I'm sure sure that will happen for them. Hopefully, in time. So, like I said, Fraser, top of the podcast. The aim of this is getting our guest, which is you, this evening, so you get to collect your fancy festival. So you can choose any five acts, one of who must play one of their studio albums in full. And you get to choose an encore, which all five acts can perform together at the end of your fantasy festival. So it's very simple. Five acts take five time slots. So I had Simon Peck, like I mentioned on in the last episode. He created his Peckerville Fantasy Festival, as follows. Very nice. In his opening slot, he had the Gaslight Anthem and had them nice. playing American Slang in full. So great shout there. I, I like Gaslight Anthem. Yeah, me too. First time they've ever been picked for a fantasy festival, believe it or not. So he had them in his opening act. Two per seconds, he had the Style Council. Midway Madness, he had Paul Weller and his mates on again. The Jam. The Jam making their first ever fantasy festival appearance, Come which on. is a great shout. Pre-headline act, he went for Prince. And for his headline act, he went for Bruce Springsteen. And for his encore, he had all five of his acts play <laughs> When You Were Young by The Killers. So, 
Great shout there. Oh, I'll tell you what, do you, do you know what, and if Simon's listening, there's a really interesting fact about Bruce Springsteen, and it was absolutely hilarious, right? It was, um, so as every as, as every teenager does, right? So obviously Bruce Springsteen's got a son. Every As every teenager does, they think their dad is incredibly uncool. And obviously Bruce Springsteen is, is Bruce fucking Springsteen, yeah. right? But his dad is like trying to bond with him. It's a genuine story. His dad, one day his dad's trying to bond with him. And he's like, oh, son, like, what are you listening to there? And his son's like, um, I think he's listening to a band called Rise Against or Against Me. I, I, one that, I think it was Rise Against yeah. or Against Me. He's one of those two. And he's like, oh, I'm listening to you have Rise Against, let's say. And, yeah, and his dad was like, all oh, right, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, and he didn't know what to do. He was like, well, um, do you want to go see him? Do you want to go watch him? We'll, we'll get his tickets. And it sounds like, oh, God, okay, fine, whatever, like, you're so uncool, like, I don't know why you're trying to get into this music sort of thing. So he goes to the concert with his dad, Mr. Springsteen, all right, and they and they watch it, and it says, oh, you know, that sound, and his son's like, yeah, yeah, that was cool, blah, 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 blah. And I'm still thinking, like, his dad's like, what are you trying to do? Like, this is, this is so uncool, like, go away. Because um, every child, every teenager goes for that rebellion stage to find themselves their boundaries and stuff, you know, and so you know, Bruce Springsteen's child is no different. And all of a sudden... Someone from the from the the venue comes up to him and goes, "Excuse me," taps him and goes, "Are you uh, yeah, hello, Mr. Br- Mr. Springsteen? The uh, the band have asked if you'd like to go meet them backstage." And he turned to his son and he's like, "What do you think?" And his son's like, "Yeah, like go on then, like that'd be awesome for me, like nice one, right?" So they're backstage and they meet the band and that and his son's like love, loving his life. He's just met his 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 favorite band and his uncle dad has taken them and now we're backstage because it's so he's absolutely gleaming and then <laughs> it turns out every single member of that band are the biggest bruce uh. springsteen fans in the entire world and they are just like pissing their pants like almost kissing the ground that bruce springsteen walks upon and one fella turns around and pulls up his top and he's got a massive bruce springsteen tattoo and his son is just stood there like no <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Because as a teenage son, that is probably the worst thing that can happen to you. Your uncle dad is taking you to watch your favourite like band of all time. And your favourite <laughs> band have got a tattoo of your uncle dad gigantically on their back. Amazing 360 moment. So there you go, Simon Peck, that's for you. I love that. Great story. I love those types of stories. Imagine, yeah, having Bruce Springsteen as his dad and thinking he's uncle. Imagine, you'd be absolutely fuming. <laughs> you'd be like, my dad's not cool. And they're like, your dad's Bruce bloody Springsteen, mate. Yeah, like, well cool. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Nice little story for you. Great story. <laughs> great story. So before we talk about your fantasy festival axe, Fraser, need to give your Ooh. fantasy festival a name and we need to hold it somewhere. So what are you going to call your fantasy festival? Um... <laughs> the first thing <laughs> I don't think I'll lead with this but the first thing that came to mind was Frostage Fest because <laughs> it's a combination between Fraser Fest and Sausage Fest <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> the first thing that came to my head we don't have to call it that actually you know what no we... I'm sticking to my guns so are we going to call... st- say it again I can't <laughs> Fro- I don't want to say frosage. I don't know. I just made. I just combined two words together. Frosage. Frosage. Frosage fest. All right, let's do that. Frosage fest. All right, I like it. It's original. <laughs> it's got to be the most immature answer you've had on this podcast. <laughs> it's all about being yourself, though. So if you can't be yourself on this podcast, then where can you be? So let's call it that. Frosage fest. You can hold it anywhere. You, you can. <laughs> I think I can need to change your name because I can't keep hearing you say it as a as a as a, as a fellow fellow adult. You're going to hear it plenty of times in this. If you want to change it, we can do it as we go along. But where where do you want to hold your fantasy festival? Do you want to hold it in the uh, depths of Colchester? You want to take us outside into London? We go back to Ireland. You can take us anywhere in the world where you'd want to hold your fantasy festival. Where would you want to hold it? See, I was thinking Australia, but it should be too bloody hot. Right, it'd be it would just be too toasty. Like I just wouldn't and always look I just don't wanna turn around and like see a kangaroo box me in the face. So <laughs> um my first thought was obviously Colchester, which I think would be cool for local for the local scene and local trade. But got nowhere to put it. So I'd want somewhere really like oh, where do we go? Maybe by the coast somewhere. Because I do love the coast. Where do I really want to go? You know, I've re- I've never been. I really want to go to Germany. It's this this whack it in Germany. It's not even by the coast, but it's just, just whack it in Germany, right? And we're gonna go for let's go for Berlin because I've heard Berlin is absolutely unreal. 
Very nice. All right, great shout. I don't think we've been to Berlin before on this podcast. So we're going to Berlin in Germany for Fossage Fest. Yeah, is that right? Am I saying that right? Frostage Fest? Frostage, yeah. Frostage. F-R-O. Frostage. Okay. Frostage Fest. All right, let's like go to... Fra- Fra- like Fraser and Sausage. Frostage Fest. All right, so we're going there. Before you talk about your five acts, Fraser, any acts you mm. want to mention quickly who you love but just haven't been able to get into your lineup? Yes. Um, Jamie T. I absolutely adore Jamie T. I think he's phenomenal. Uh, Luke Concannon, or a.k.a. Nitz Loppy. They're amazing. I supported them. I, I absolutely, They are one of the reasons why I am who I am musically today. Um, there's a fellow called uh, Lewis Dunford who I uh, just I'm in, I'm in awe with. Like my genuine goal, I I would sell a kidney to be able to support him at a show. And like he, I recently covered one of his songs and he replied to it wow. on Instagram. I almost pissed my pants. And his manager saw it as well, which was cool. But yeah, so th- so them 100. Uh, percent they, they don't get enough credit. So, but also, um, actually, no, I'll leave those. Yeah, because I'm going to include these, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, some decent acts missing out. Jamie T gets spoken about a little bit as a missed artist, but he's never actually made it into a five. So, he'll have to wait another episode, another week to get on. So, two o'clock in, Frostage Fest, Berlin, Germany, rocking. Fraser, who Mm. are you going to have open your fantasy festival? Can I go with friends? Yeah, go with anyone who you want to go with. Yeah. And I'm not just saying them. Because they're my friends, I'm saying them because they're generally they produce some of my favourite music. <clears throat> and there's a fella called Jack Walsh who is from Colchester. And I said I'm being dead dead serious. I'm not just saying them because I know them. I'm actually a huge fan of their music. Like I adore his music. Um, a phenomenal kind of Frank Turnery kind of singer songwriter, but incredibly talented lyricist with an extremely strong voice and it's just him and his guitar and he's on spotify he's only got four four songs out on a on a ep called kintsugi k-i-n-t-s-u-g-i i love that man so much so he would open for me hands down great stuff i look forward to hearing some of jack walsh's stuff not heard of him before but this is what this podcast is all about introducing <clears throat> new music or reinvigorating your love of an older artist so jack walsh gonna open your fantasy festival gonna play from two till three o'clock we'll take a half hour break but that'll take us mm-hmm. to half past three it'll be time for your super seconds act we're going to get an hour so who's going to be your super seconds yeah. act mr morgan there is a phenomenal duo called armored man and so it's this fella one of them stands there and sings whilst also playing either the mandolin or the violin and the other guy sits and plays the kick drum and the guitar and sings and does harmonies I'm not jar beautiful in awe. I've seen them; they are phenomenal. They're I, they're friends of mine. I absolutely blown away by them, and they've got an uh, an an album on Spotify. I can't remember what it's called. I believe it is called Natives. Phenomenal album, and they're just extremely. They're, they're quite Celtic. <clears throat> In their performance and their melodies and their and the lyricism are just awe inspiring, and they just they they both Jack Walsh and Armored Man demand the room's attention without saying the words. Um, it's just their presence alone makes you go holy fucking shit balls! Like this is insane. So yeah, Armored Man, one hundred percent. Great stuff. So Armored Man are going to take your super second slot. Two new acts on the Fantastical journey tonight so far. So <laughs> brilliant, loving that. They're going to play till half past four. We'll take another mm-hmm. half-hour break. That'll take us to five o'clock. Then it'll be time for your Midway Madness Act. So, Fraser, who's going to be your Midway Madness Act? Well, if we go for Madness, Midway Madness, and uh, I love these, uh, there's a band called Grebo, G-R-E-E-B-O. I love them. I think they're great. There's a c- couple of young lads, three young lads, and they're quite um, punky, quite heavy punky. It's kind of like... It's kind of like they're talking over music, but they're saying it with this British accent. Like, it's it's awesome. Uh, the, the energy is just insane. And they just keep getting better and better and better. And it's just phenomenal to see. Brilliant stuff. So, Grebo are going to take your midway madness slot. They're going to play from five till six. Again, not an actor mm-hmm. I've heard of, but I look forward to hearing their stuff. So, three acts down, two acts left. That takes us to half six. Be time for your pre-headline act. So, Fraser... Who's going to be your pre-headline act? Oh, I would... Oh, it's tough. Because I've got two other friends' bands that I really want to say, but 
I was just going to say, and for sake of saying, you need to look at look up the Mefs and Rats because I both they're my friends and they're both absolutely amazing and they're doing really well. And I said the other three because they're, they're a bit smaller and they deserve the the, the stage to present uh, to support these acts. But I think to go on fourth would have to be Jerry Cinnamon. I this is where, where we get into like the depths of my music. Like Jerry Cinnamon, one hundred percent. It's this uh, Glas Glaswegian guy I spoke about earlier on, and he's just he's just nothing but music. It's just him and a stomp box. And his passion and his soul and his lyricism and his onstage, it's just, it's everything's there. And he's not signed to anyone. He's, I think he's, I think he's, he's signed to a label called Runaway Records, which is his partner owns, I believe, but I'm not, don't hold me to that. He's unmanaged and he just does what he wants when he wants. And it's bloody fantastic. And he's just, I would, I actually, <laughs> a really funny story. When I, about five or six years ago, I went to, um, I went to my friends' message. My friends were in a band at the time. They're like, "Hey, we've got a gig. Do you want to come along and watch us?" I stick you on the guest list. It's in London at the time. I just moved there. I was like, "Yeah, go on." And so I show up, and there's all this TV crew, and I'm like, "My friend's band's not here." I'm really confused, and all of a sudden, Holly Willoughby walks through the door, right? And I'm like, "Where am I?" So I call up my friends, and I'm like, "What? Wh where are you? Where am I?" <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, it's not a gig." They're like, we just did an interview thing somewhere else, but we just get you in for free. You can go watch this. And I'm like, but what is it? It turns out it was a This Feeling gig sponsored by Red Stripe. And I ended up tweeting, oh, Holly Willoughby's here, sick. And someone come up to me, they're like, you Fraser Morgan? I was like, shit. And they were like, we work for Red Stripe. Can you delete that tweet? I was like, ah, oh, sorry, yes. And then Red Stripe followed me back. And then I was like, at the time, I wasn't really, it's crazy to think, I wasn't a fan of live music about five or six years ago when I was about 19, 20. I thought the world was against me. I was up my own ass, as is every late teen, yeah. right? And I wasn't a fan of live music. And this fellow went on, the, went on the stage. And I think I went to take a video or a picture, but I wasn't allowed to. I was oh, I'm not bothered anyway. I'm a moody little teen that I was. And I left. And um, turns out it was Jay Cinnamon. Oh, my. <laughs> I honestly, if I could go back, if someone said to me, if you can go back in time, what would you do, where would you go? I'd go back to Nambuka in North London and punch 19-year-old me in the face. <laughs> and be like, you stay at that fucking gig, you hear me? Because you're going to absolutely love this guy. You're going to get you're gonna get out of your own arse, right? And you're going to sort yourself out and you're going to love live music. And this will be one of the most important musical experiences of your life. Don't screw that up for both of us. So... <laughs> That's yeah. an amazing story. Amazing story. Joey Cinnamon, right? Scotland plays stadiums. It's not even playing like little academy. He's playing stadiums. Played like two nights at Hampton Park, I think, like last summer or this summer. Crazy. Right. In insane. And I don't know how we did it. He's literally in a... It's almost cultive. Yeah. It's almost cult-like because... And I'm not saying he is cult, but I'm saying his following are so dead on. They're so supportive. And I think his following are just actual music lovers who love... The base, the basic of what he does. They love his lyrics. They love him. He's a bit laddish, and he, he's a working class type of fella. Before he did that, he was a fucking, he was a labourer like. So he represents the working class, and people love those kind of underdog stories. And he's he does he doesn't he doesn't fuck with TikTok. He posts the odd picture on Instagram. And he's not signed to any label, and he's made a killing. And I couldn't be more envious of someone in my life. Just lets the music do the talking, right? Doesn't need any anything else to back it up. Just letting the music no do the talking. No gimmicks, right? He is himself. He needs the song say, say for himself. He doesn't need no big marketing company behind him to pump money into him to make people like him. It was it was like late thir no, he was thirty or thirty one when he started to make it. That gives me hope because sometimes ah oh, because of because of the industry I'm in and because of the uh, some people I'm around, I look at some of them doing the things they're doing. I'm like, oh shit, my time's passed. Like that's it. Is it? Is that's it for me to think? And I look at myself sometimes. I go, you're twenty bloody five, mate. Yeah. Like your time hasn't passed. You've you've just found yourself and your music. Yeah, you might see these nineteen twenty year olds start to do all this stuff, but. What do they stand for in terms of their personality and their morals? And how long will it last? Only time will tell those things. But as long as you're a decent person, you make good music, people will listen. And that just, Jerry Cinnamon's living proof. So I look up to him a lot for that. Great shout. Great shout. Very well said. So Jerry Cinnamon, first time he's been picked on the Fantastical podcast. We've got four new acts on our lineup. Amazing. So <laughs> Jerry Cinnamon plays from half six to eight o'clock. One more half hour break. Then your headline act are going to come on. They're going to get two and a half hours. They're going to play to 11 o'clock. So who Ugh. is going to be the headline act at your fantasy festival, Fraser? Absolutely, like, no battle on eyelids. Uh, there's an American uh, folk punk band called The Front Bottoms. So you heard that right, The Front Bottoms. And I am in absolute 
love with them. I've emailed their agent multiple times, been like, can I support them if they ever come over here? Obviously, I've had no reply every time. I absolutely adore them. They are, their songwriting is so incredibly interesting. Some of them don't even follow a narrative, and I just don't make sense, and I love it. I'm scared to meet them. They say don't meet your heroes. Mm. I've met a couple of my heroes. They're a bit weird. Like... I'm scared to meet some of my heroes because of the ones I have met are just a bit strange or a bit up on themselves. I'm like, because that's, that's the thing with music as well. It goes one of two ways. You always get the really nice or sound people or you get the absolute like knobheads. And so I'm so scared to meet them. I don't know if I want to. I like at the moment they're pure and untouched and nothing's wrong about them. But yeah, they are phenomenal. I first came across them when I was about <clears throat> 18 and a song came on onto youtube called twin size mattress and i played it once i was like oh that's a banging song never listened to any more of their music and then about a year and a half later i found their songs again i was like oh it's these guys have a listen and i was like wow they're insane and i've got their entire discography in a playlist that i just play on repeat that i could just play every song i love every single song they have Great. like it's i've never had that before either Great stuff. So the front bottom, I'm a bit intrigued when you said never meet your heroes and went to say they've been arseholes and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Who have you met who may have... Not that they've been arseholes. There's just been... (laughs) I found in in music in in general, okay, at at multitude of levels, the nicest people you'll find are the unsigned ones that I found. Um, There's been a, 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 a multitude of acts where I've gone to festivals and they've been quite even not even that famous but quite high up on the bill there's just there's a lot of um what's the there's a lot of ego in me which is which is expected I guess with music right because you're on a stage and people are singing your songs and to a degree I have to have an, a slight ego to be able to want to do it but I because you know, I find my my meaning I don't find my meaning in validation of people saying you are great and I go, yeah, I fucking am, right? I find my validation in music by connecting with people. So that's why that's predominantly why I'm in, in music, because I love connecting with people. My therapist said to me as well, she was like, I think your thing is connection. And I was like, it genuinely is. I love playing gigs, talking to the crowd, being in no bed with them, talking about mental health and having these intimate moments and then finishing my set and going out straight off the stage, put my guitar away, just go stand out and just chat to everyone. I adore it. It's my favourite thing in the world. I love anyone because time is a currency that you can neither get a refund nor retrieve in any way, shape or form. So the fact that someone has chosen to spend their time on me, I believe it's only right that I go out of my way to thank that person. Now, I know as it gets hard, it's harder for artists to do that, but I'm really hoping that I never produce an ego because to, to uh, what I believe is everyone has the same intrinsic value. I am better than no one. No one's better than me. We're all just humans wearing cotton on our backs. You know, these T-shirts and these shorts, these jeans, whatever. So we're just bit, wearing a bit of clothing underneath. We're all just weird, naked apes, right? Who all we want is just love. And so we're all the same deep down, I think, if you break it down. And that's how I see everyone. And But when I've gone to meet some artists, some kind of biggish artists after shows and stuff or, you know, at festivals and things, they feel like the world's apart from everyone else and they're so disconnected. Yeah. And I guess it's easy to feel like that because of the disconnection they can have from people because, you know, they can't always be out in the crowds as dependent on their sides. But part of it doesn't want to get to that big if 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 it means getting that big and not having that connection with people then i don't know if i'd want it but yeah i i think it's safer if i don't name drop fair <laughs> fair i think enough. it's safer but there's just as as i've gotten higher as it goes higher up i've just i've just become more and more weirded out by them and i'm like is this what the music industry is this is a weird place like i'm just here cuz i just love I love connecting with people. I love people coming up to me and being like, that song you wrote, Mistakes Don't Define You. Thank you, because that has really helped me with my mental health. Or, uh, you know, that one you wrote about your fear of death from growing up. I didn't know that other people felt like that. And that's awesome. And I love giving... There's nothing better in the world, I think, than, you know, in a bit of a mood or having a bit of an emotion, you stumble across a song and there's someone else is singing your thoughts, your feelings. You go, holy shit. You feel incredibly validated. You don't feel alone anymore. You feel connected. You feel understood. It's one of my favorite, most favorite feelings in the world. And to know that to some degree, 
some people have found that same feeling in some of my songs that I've written. I'm like, holy shit balls. That's insane. Like I've got a song that I wrote in 10, 15 minutes called Here We Go Again, which is just about my brain and it's about my anxiety and how I have these, this imposter syndrome and these spiraling thoughts. And so, oh, here we go again. And many people come up to me and they go, thank you for that. And I'm like, I'm so sorry you can relate, but I'm happy that there's a song for that for you out there. So, but yeah, that's just a long winded way of saying some people are weird, but I love people and I hope I never change. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you never change either, Fraser. I hope you never change either. So, the Front Bottoms make their fantastical debut. They play for two and a half hours, so you'll be in your element. At 11 oh, o'clock, yeah. they're bringing back out Joe Cinnamon, Grebo, Armoured Man, and Jack yes. Walsh. You can even come out if you want. They can even oh, play... I'm coming out, yeah. yeah. They can even play a Fraser Morgan song. It's completely up to you. But they're going to play one song that you're going to tell them to play, and that's going to be their encore, your encore. What are you going to have all five of your fantasy acts and yourself play to close your fantasy festival oh, I don't know if I'd go out of there because I'm too scared to make the front bottoms but <laughs> I think there's a song that I love called Your Heart is a Muscle The Size of Your Fist by a band called Ramshackle Glory now they were so this the, the lead singer is what is his name again he had a song called um, Ramshackle Glory oh, because he, ha- he, he goes by another name as well what's his name Pat the Bunny yeah so he is um absolutely awesome um songwriter pat the bunny i'm just i'm not ignoring you i'm just looking yeah so no, he's still going okay but who where was the other one that was called that i loved name 10 oh paul barabo sorry anyway sorry complete complete fucking <laughs> sidetrack so anyway paul pat the bunny he's um usually side up but he's also got this project called ramshackle glory and he's an ex-heroin addict and all of his songs are so perfectly imperfect uh, he's, they've got a phenomenal live album and your heart is a muscle the size of your fist is on there and it's a wonderfully glorious song i won't tell anyone what the song's about because you hit as you listen to all of the if you could set aside three to four minutes of your time to listen to this song i highly recommend it because it's it's very fun it's energetic it, and it's not perfectly recorded. They literally set up a microphone in a room. Kind of like there's another band called Days and Days, an American um, kind of punky band of four. And they record all their songs in the cupboard. If you listen to a lot of their songs, there's a hiss in it, a buzz, because they're recorded in a mop cupboard. But yeah, and it's like this album. It's, the beauty in this album is the imperfection and the way that they just recorded music for the love of recording music. And yeah, your, your, your heart is a muscle the size of your fist is one that you can just scream in your car. Your heart is a muscle of the size of your fist. Keep on loving, keep on fighting. Hold on, hold on. So I can't sing it properly because I've got a sore throat and it's really high up. But it's so energetic. And if I was to see all of that lot going mental on stage of that, oof, oof. <laughs> Be like your dreams coming true, which is what this podcast is all about, right? Mm, absolutely. <laughs> so let's lock it in then, Fraser. Your fantasy festival. Then we've got Frostage Fest. We're going to Berlin, Germany. <laughs> we've got Jack. I can say it now. I've got my head around it now. We've got Jack Walsh in your opening act. Super Seconds, yeah. we've got Armoured Man. Midway mm-hmm. Madness, we've got Grebo. Pre-headline yeah. act, Joey Cinnamon. Headlining the front bottoms. Encore, they're all going to come out together. You can. Your optional, if you want to come out, you can do. All going to play. Your heart is a muscle the size of your fist. Are you happy to lock that one into the Fantastical Vaults? Oh, sign, seal, delivered, I'm yours, I think a wise man once said. (laughs) Great stuff. So, Fraser, before we wrap this one up, what do the next few months look like in terms of releases? I know we've spoken about your live dates, but in terms of your release schedule and everything else that's going on, what you got planned, mate? So, um, as I said to you before, before this we hit record, I'm just sick of sitting on my material now. Like, I could die very soon. I don't want to, but I could. And what would I just sit on my songs? And my friends and family don't know the password to my laptop. And I hope they don't, because some of the stuff on there is question. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but no, I... <clears throat> and so I just thought, you know, I'm just going to release music. I've got whatever waiting for. And then I was saying to you, like, I thought there was a formula. I thought there was a right way to... There's not. Just do it, because you love it. And if it doesn't go well, at least you can say you put your heart into it and you gave your best shot. There is no failure in in trying. The true failure is never trying at all. And so I'm happy with that. So yeah, so in the next hopefully two to three weeks, I'm releasing an acoustic version of Home. I don't know if I'm meant to be telling you all this. Probably not, but I don't care. I've got no manager. I'll do what I want. Yeah. In the next two to three weeks, I'm hoping to release an acoustic version of Home is Where the Heart Is. And then 
within the next seven to eight weeks, I'm releasing my song Mistakes Don't Define You, which is a song that I recorded in my friends. My friends got a company called Best Days Vintage and they have a warehouse. And I borrowed, my, fr my friend is a school teacher and we borrowed the school's microphones to record this song in a warehouse. It sounds super DIY and I adore it. And I'm trying to push social media stuff to keep myself busy during quiet times. And then I'm just constantly looking for gigs. To any HMVs that want me, anyone, any front rooms that want me, any sheds. I'll, I literally play anywhere and everywhere. I've played 753 gigs and over 265 venues. I adore gigging. I, you name it, I've played it. So yeah, and it's just playing as much as I can, uh, writing songs and releasing, um, ready to hopefully... Well, ready to play the, the big festivals next year. Hopefully, um, Glastow and Reading and, and Leeds um, it will be on the it'll be on the slightly smaller stages in, the, in King Tut and and stuff. And um, what's the other one? Um, Boomtown. There's loads. I apply for about like fifty to hundred festivals. Um, so yeah, hopefully um, that. <laughs> Brilliant. I look forward to seeing you hopefully on many bills in 2023. So let's plug the socials again in Fraser. So if people want to go and follow you or listen to your music. Give us a final plug. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you? Uh, if I'm in OnlyFans, you can find me. At, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was young and needed the money, all right? We all found our ways to survive in the panoramic. <laughs> that was mine. No. Um, so, yeah, it's just usual suspects. You know, obviously Spotify, uh, Apple Music. Uh, I've got my own podcast, the Fraser Morgan podcast. I don't know if I'm allowed to promote my podcast. Of course yours. you can. Of course Very you sorry. can. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Thank you. And then, yeah, Fraser Morgan on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok, even though I despise TikTok, because I, 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 as I said to you earlier, I don't like the thought of having to sit in my room and stare at myself for an hour editing videos. I'd rather just be out there writing and playing music. But yeah, all those usual usual suspects. And hopefully one day, a, a, a HMV or front room near you. <laughs> so that is it. Thanks to everyone who's listened to the 109th episode of the Fantastical Podcast. If you've enjoyed this one, please subscribe. Give the Fantastical Podcast a review on iTunes. You can also rate the show on Spotify. So thanks to everyone who has done so, so far with that. We are also on Twitter alongside Fraser. So if you don't follow us, make sure to do so at Fantastical P. And you can also email the podcast at fantasticalpodcast at outlook.com. Unfortunately, we don't play music on this podcast but I'll get some tracks from Fraser of his chosen acts that he's talked about in this episode. We'll make a nice little Spotify playlist that people can go and search for in the episode description and we'll put some of Fraser's tunes on there. So Fraser, yeah, you, you mentioned your podcast earlier. Mm. So you've gone from host to guest on this one. How have you mm. found it, mate? I really enjoyed talking to you. I found you an intriguing and amazing guest to have. How have you found being Sorry, a... Sorry, I, I didn't mean to talk so much either. It's because I'm used to being the host, so when I get a chance to talk... I just don't want to shut me up, but always, mate, it's been absolutely phenomenal. Like, it's been really nice, and you've asked some phenomenal questions. The flow has been gorgeous, and it's felt natural. I felt like I was sat there talking to my therapist, because you, you didn't stop me at any point, and I just, just, I just kept wanting to talk to you and tell you everything <laughs> about me. So maybe, Steve, maybe your, maybe your future's in, in therapy. As in, not you going, but you giving, because, honestly, I could sit here, and talk to you all day, and you weren't saying anything, you were just nodding along, and like, yeah, yeah, and it just felt like I was in therapy, it's beautiful. <laughs> Maybe in 10 years' time, when I'm a therapist, and you've got people going to your shows for free, sneaking in, we'll look back on this podcast, and we'll laugh, and you'll go, remember that fantastical podcast 10 years ago, look where we are now. <laughs> yeah, I'm broke, because everyone's breaking into my festivals and not paying, and I'm, I'm coming to you for therapy. <laughs> and I'm loaded, because I'm a therapist, I'll take that all day long. <laughs> I'll say that all day long, Fraser. <laughs> so, ladies and gents, I'll be back next week with episode 110. So, please make sure to join me. But until then, stay safe, my fantastical friends. Please continue to spread the word. And that word is fantastical. Thanks for listening.